Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. I know that you are learning so much from the truths concerning Christ and his blood. And we want you to memorize John 17, 3. This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. There is no other God there is no other way to get to heaven except through his blood. It's all about Christ. And we are learning this in these lessons. Leviticus 17, 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Verse 14, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And then we see, as we come to these lessons today, we must go back to Acts chapter 17, beginning in verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he liveth, giveth to all, giveth to all life and breath and all things. Our very breath belongs to him. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, that they may seek the Lord, for in him we live and move and have our being. So we see there is victory in only one person, that is Jesus Christ. Victory has been obtained through the blood of Jesus Christ, Hebrews 9, 12. Christ has provided redemption. He is our great high priest. No longer can Satan rule the universe. God is in command. Victory has been won, and one day Satan shall be cast into the lake of of fire. He was conquered on the cross. He has no power over any believer. And we have put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The blood availed then when Christ died and arose after the third day his crucifixion atones our sins. His resurrection eradicates our sin. His ascension shows us that we are going to be raptured to meet him in the clouds because he is the head and we are the body. We must be united. He is the bridegroom and we are the bride we must be united. This is the true facts of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then we see his blood avail then, his divine blood, and it avails now. Throughout all eternity, it shall never lose its power. 
we are covered by the blood from the world around us, from the satanic powers over us, and from our fleshly sins. The flesh is an enemy because the lust of the flesh destroys our body. And this is something we must understand in these lessons, how important our bodies are concerning our salvation and concerning how we are to care for this body. First, I want to show you this. As a child of God, I want you to remember these Bible verses. Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are his. Now this is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, Know ye not, and this is verse 16, Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, holy God. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye? Now, as we study these lessons, this divine nature bestowed by the Spirit of God is a holy nature and a nature which possesses in it the love of God. Now, I have had people say, we want to know where this promise is. This promise is in 2 Peter chapter 1, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world through lust. As a child of God, we've escaped that. And in verse 3, he says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. What is virtue? Moral excellency. This is why we must know these truths and live according to them. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice in thee today. We thank thee that every true believer today, right now, this is our prayer for them, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that we may know the fullness of God, all the fullness of God. And this ministry, whatever anyone has as a ministry, is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of believers until we all come into the unity, unto a perfect man, unto the knowledge of Christ, unto the fullness of Christ. This is our desire as we pray for every person that's truly a child of God today, that thou will conquer every sin, the Holy Spirit and the blood and the word. We come into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith that thou will 
cleanse us from all sin and conquer all satanic powers, all demonic spirits against this body of believers. For those without Christ, they will call upon thee to save them today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we saw last week the blood and how how powerful the blood is. It's the only remedy from sin. Sinless blood, and only one could supply this, even the sinless Son of God. He could never sin. It is innocent blood. Even Judas confessed, I have betrayed innocent blood. Our Lord was innocent. Jesus was conceived by a divine father. He had divine blood. He had sinless blood. Adam's blood, which transmits the original sin, not called the seed of the woman, but was Adam's sin. Only Jesus is called the seed of the woman because he was born of a woman and was without one drop of human blood in his veins. And Adam all died because of his sin. Christ could avoid the sin of Adam, which is only transmitted through the blood which the male contributes to his offspring. This is at conception. It is the blood that brings forth life of any child born. The man is the one that contributes the blood. The woman gives the child the body. Jesus could have a human body but one drop of Adam's blood would have made him a sinner like you and me. There was then only one remedy, and this is why you must understand these truths. This divine blood, this conception by the Holy Spirit for Mary, was the only way that the virgin born could be accomplished. Remember, Mary was a virgin. Joseph was a virgin. He never knew her until after Christ was born. Mary contributed the body of Jesus, and he became the seed of David according to the flesh. The Holy Spirit contributed the blood of of Jesus. The Holy Spirit planted that blood into her womb so that he could be conceived with perfect blood and still have a perfect body. God's word has never changed. This is every person, man and woman, is commanded to be a virgin. That is God's plan, and his word never changes. The same way that Mary was conceived, so are we conceived with the blood of Jesus Christ planted into our body by the Holy Spirit. Spirit and gives us life, eternal life. We have now in us His divine nature, His divine blood, and we are to live this heavenly, divine, holy life. It is sinless blood, it is precious blood, for there has never been 
any other like his divine blood. It is for every nation, every person. There is no racism with Christ. None in this book. We are one of all nations. God is no respecter of persons. It is innocent blood. When Judas confessed, I have betrayed innocent blood, our Lord Jesus Christ was innocent. Jesus Christ was conceived by his divine Father. His was divine blood and sinless blood. I'm repeating many of these because this is the most important lessons for our last days. As I have said before, there is no other God under heaven but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they are perfect. They are equal. There is no division. For this body of believers that is conceived by the blood of Jesus Christ, put into our body by the Holy Spirit, that now he is in me, his divine nature, his holy nature. And this is because it is the blood that unites us into one body we are to pray for one another. And I cannot hardly say this without tears because the people that I give out the word to, they want to do something for me. I don't do this for money. You're never to ask for money. Christ never asked for money. And this is the abundant life that I live because I do this for each of you. And I know how people pray and this touches me more than anything. And you will be rewarded when you get to heaven. So the blood of Jesus Christ is such that it takes a man who is dead in trespasses and sins as the healing power of that blood flows in. It transforms a dead person into a new and living creature, alive in Christ for all eternity. Colossians 3.3 3. We walk in newness of life. We walk in newness of life. If you want to know where we're dead in trespasses and sin, it is in Ephesians 2, 1. Every person is dead. We're dead. We must be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan under thee. It is the only, blood, only thing that can give life, eternal life, was the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other way for anyone to get to heaven. That blood had to conceive us and make us free, not dead, but alive. This is the most important lesson you're ever going to hear. That divine blood holds the power of the resurrection life in the blood of Jesus Christ. Divine ordinance. I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Luke 22, 20. This cup is the blood of my New Testament, which is shed for you for remission of sins. Our Lord, on the eve of his offering his sacrifice for us, his priestly sacrifice, willingly, our Lord, his offering up himself as his priestly sacrifice. That's how he can be our great high priest in heaven today. And he is in the order 
of Melchizedek, which we're going to learn in a few weeks. The greatest truth about Melchizedek is in chapter 14 of the book of Genesis, and that is the history of Melchizedek. And then in Psalm, it tells us that Jesus Christ is from the order of Melchizedek that is in heaven today preparing a place for us, and this is eternal. He is the only eternal priest. He's the only priest for the church today, and he is in heaven today, and this was his priestly sacrifice. We appropriate the blood of the altar by an initial act of believing. Now, I know, all of you know, I have lived by faith. Unless you appropriate all of these truths by faith, you will never receive the blessings from God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must be born again, John 3, 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You have to have that blood to give you this new eternal life. It is a divine conception. It is a heavenly birth. You must be born again and that you are lost no matter how many churches you belong to, how many organizations you believe in. There is no religion for any person today. No religion whatsoever. There is no place in this Bible for any denominations. It's all about Christ. Unless you have been washed in the precious blood of Christ to exalt our head and one that loves us this much and his great high priest, he's faithful and merciful and he's touched with our infirmities and our head, the Lord Jesus Christ and we are to love one another. Now the blood is the only tissue that is not fixed but circulates throughout the body of every living cell. Just like the stream of blood goes through this book, every word is sealed by the blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ is to every believer the only source of life, the only support and substance of life, also the one who keeps cleansing us day by day. He's at the throne with his blood cleansing us as we confess that sin so that our eternal life is really eternal. You can't be saved a little at a time because the Holy Spirit is God. His Son cleanses us from all sin. That means all, that's all, all past sins, future sins, everything that we all means all. That's all all means. And then the divine chemistry. I want you to just listen how great our God is. In Revelation, the saints of God had washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Now the righteousness of Christ, the, their garments speak of the righteousness of Christ. In Revelation seven fourteen, washing in the blood and becoming white. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. No darkness in my body. My body is his divine nature. That's a body of light. And if we obey this, no disease can live where light is. Because when we sin, then that keeps us from receiving the blessings of our bodies. His sinless supernatural blood alone can do that. Indwelling Spirit, John 7, 37 through 39, John 4, 14. We drink the water 
it goes down into our stomachs, then it is absorbed into the bloodstream, which carries it out to every living cell. John 6, 35, through the shed blood, we obtain that breath of life, which transforms us into new beings in Jesus Christ. Through the same blood, we receive the supply of living water to our souls, and through that bloodstream, too, we feed upon the bread of life, the Word of God. Now, as we, we get to these lessons next week, the next few weeks, you are going to see what Christ has done for us his heavenly divine glory. He received the reward of glory after he obeyed his heavenly Father. And he seated there with all of these acquired glories of God. And these are for us, our participation in all these glories. And just one of them today, I've not got time to go into all of these seven, but such are his acquired glories of God and our participation in them. And I'm just going to read Revelation right now so you can understand what he says about our eternal life. Revelation 21, 6 and 7. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But listen at verse 8. I want you to read that. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. If you are worshiping any other person, any idol, you are an idolater other than Christ. Thank you.